So for a match pairs t-test, we need to make sure that all the observations were collected in pairs. The most um, the classic example of this is uh, when you have a before and after type of situation. Uh, so before and after might be something like uh, you're talking about the same participant. So maybe uh, I get my blood pressure checked, I go run 15 minutes, and then I get my blood pressure checked again. So before is the first measurement, after is the second measurement. Maybe that's uh, before and after taking a drug. All those kinds of things can happen uh, when you're doing testing like that. Another example would be like a husband-wife. So anything that's collected in pairs, any kind of data. So if you collect um, a husband's age, at the same time you collect the wife's age. Those are two separate pieces of data. But we don't really look at each list separately. We look at this in pairs. And so the key to understanding matched pairs is understand it's all about the difference here. So we are subtracting one minus another. And so in this case, husband's age minus wife's age. And as you might expect, um, this is what's true with my wife and I, is that I'm a little bit older than she is. And so lots of folks are in this area of uh, kind of where the husband is just a little bit older. There's one husband here in this data that is 20 years older and one um, husband that is 12 years younger than his wife. So it's kind of all spread out, but that's the type of thing we're looking at before and after or husband and wife or any type of data that was collected in pairs on purpose. It's really important to understand that it is all about that difference. It's all about the difference it's not about each individual uh, set of data. So husband's age, wife's age. In fact, we ignore the original data. We don't even look at it. Uh, we all, we make one set of data. It is the difference between the two things. And so that is a one sample t-test. Um, N is the number of pairs that you have in this. And so um, for this type of data, the other, the advantage of this, if you want to know the advantage, why do we uh, do this type of data? Well, stats is the study of uh, variation, and so it actually reduces variation. And so we have less variation um, when we have paired data because we're comparing um, two things that have been collected together that have a relationship to each other, either the same person before and after doing something or uh, a married couple. And so it's actually, in a way, what we're doing here is actually a type of blocking. So if you think about back to experimental methods, uh, match pair is, is basically a blocking technique. The formulas are very similar to what we did with a one-sample t-test. In fact, we basically do a one-sample t-test on the difference. Uh, but so really when we talk about these two things here, x-bar and the standard error, we're talking about the standard error of the difference, the x-bar, the mean of the difference there. And this one's kind of interesting because in this setting, it's going to be the, uh, the mean of the null here. And that always has a certain value. It's going to be equal to zero because that's pretty much our null hypothesis here. We think that husband's age minus the wife's age will be zero. We think there's nothing unusual happening here. That's the null hypothesis. So interesting enough with this formula, zero is always plugged in there for a match pairs test. And degrees of freedom is going to be the number of pairs minus one. Here's the question. And if you've ever waited in a grocery line, you know that um, this is an interesting question. Is the express lane really faster? Uh, so we did a study, and 15 times during the week, you know, they, they bought one item from the store, and they had two students do it, and they flipped a coin, so they used some randomness as to who went in which lane. And they entered the lanes at the same time, paid it with the same method, and reduced, recorded the time it took. And so which one was faster? Was it faster to be in the express lane or the, um, or the regular lane? And you hate it when someone actually, you ever try that? Someone tries to go in the express lane with more than 15 items. Um, that's just a side note there. Uh, but hypothesis here, so in this case, we need to define a, a parameter first. The mean of the diff here. Uh, the mean of the difference is going to be equal to the mean of the regular lane minus the mean of the express lane. And so it doesn't matter which way you do this, before, minus, after, after, minus, before, uh, but you need to explain which one you did uh, so that you've defined it. So now I know what the mean of difference is, so then our hypothesis, our null hypothesis, would just be the mean of the diff 
is equal to zero. That's pretty much always our null. So then you have to look at the context of the question to get the alternate. The mean of the diff, which lane's faster? We think the express lane is faster, so we're going to say greater than zero here, because we think the regular time will be more than the express line. So that's our alternate. There's always three conditions here. The first one is random. We check that. It is, in fact, random data. Second one is less than 10%. So this, what we sampled has to be less than 10% of all the people who shop at this grocery store. Clearly, 15 people is less than 10% of that. And the third one's kind of an interesting one. It's checking the nearly normal um, statement of the graph. And when we're talking about this, we're, we're, it's all about the diff. So we're talking about the difference. And so it's a great idea to actually you know, get your data and sketch it out and do... Um, and see if the data looks normal enough. It shouldn't have any major outliers, it shouldn't be skewed too much. So you want to sketch that out. That AP test really likes when you show that work there. Here's the data. I'd like you to go and enter it in your calculator. You can stop it and enter it. Uh, I did that on my TI Inspire here. And so then you need to go to a third list. Because it's all about the diff, we need to, uh, I like to actually call it the diff here. So we, we enter the data there in the diff. Man. And then I'm going to use the variable key and say the regular uh, minus the variable key again and the express. And so we have now our data. 342 minus 337 is 5. So we have regular minus express. So this column is the diff. I really don't care about these two columns anymore. All I care about is this. All my calculations are coming from the diff now. That's why it's all about the diff. Degrees of freedom, we talked about a minute ago. Since n is 15, degrees of freedom would be 14. Always a good idea to show that on your work. Let's actually do this now in our calculator. So if you insert a calculator page, and then hit your menu button, and you know that stats is 6, tests are 7, and t-test is what we want. It's very tempting for students to go to this, two sample t-test. Uh, but again, it's all about the diff. It's not about each individual piece. Since we have lists, we're going to say data here. And the null is always zero. The list is called diff. And the alternate is going to be greater than. So we think that's going to be zero, so we think it's greater than zero. And say OK. And it gives us our data there. And you can see here the t-value is 1.96, very close to 2. p-value is 0.03, so 3%. I think we're going to reject if the uh, significance level is 5%. And so you've got all your data. You've got x-bar. You've got the standard deviation there. So you want to write that down. And it's a good idea to um, write that down because they like to see, the AP College Board really likes to see some of this work here. So they want to see... You've done the X bar, the diff, so X bar is 42.6 minus 0. Again, that's always going to be 0. And then the standard deviation, or the standard error here would be 84.019 divided by the square root of n. In case you didn't follow what n was, n is 15. It's listed there. And then you get your value. We can just copy these values from here or check it if we want to. 1.966. I think it's always a good idea to, to graph this to kind of show some work here. And so I like to do my uh, you know three standard deviations out here. And so we know from the empirical rule that two of these are 95%. So when it says 1.96, it's still right in there or more extreme than that. That's our shaded area. I know there's going to be about 2.5% there, so it's no surprise that this is a p-value of uh, 3%. They always like to see um, this work, so probability that t is greater than 1.966 is equal to uh, 0.03. So we reject the null. We think that the express lane actually is faster um, and so we, we come to conclusion um, on this data, and that's how you do this um, t-test.